Okay, let's continue to talk about uh, life insurance. Um, so whole life insurance, uh, you can customize it. Okay, like uh, the first to die provision provide death benefit when the first insurer dies. First to die uh, is less than either single life expectancy. So basically, you have uh, a spouse, right? You don't know which one would die first. So first to die means when the first one dies, um, you will pay out. And they have a uh, second to die. Um, again, all those are um, just legal contracts, so you can identify the way you want. So the first, second to die provides health benefits when second or last insured dies. Second to die life expectancy is greater than either individual life expectancy. Basically, two people to both uh, die. Okay, and then it's mainly for estate liquidity. Uh, dividend options, uh, some uh, life insurance, again, as we mentioned, it's in the mutual form, right? It's like a community or credit union, you can think it like that. And then uh, <clears throat> at the end of the year, right, if they uh, collect more premium uh, than the expense, they will pay out the difference, right? Uh, either cash or paying additions, maybe next year, or they can give you some cash value, or next year you have lower premium. I can give you just one year term policy, basically the value, right? You just convert it to it and then give you a definition of this amount. Uh, for any cash value life insurance, you are going to have something called a surrender charge. What is a surrender charge? So basically, uh, you can have money in your life insurance with cash value, but what if you say, um, I probably don't need life insurance anymore, right? I don't. Oh, I don't think it's a good idea. You need to remember most life insurance are sold, okay? Like, you, you uh, heard about the story, someone knocking on other people's door and then sell them insurance or just call the call, right? So if they decide to not continue the contract, they have to pay something called a surrender charge, which is a rule, okay? It's just legal contract. And, um, Okay, and then uh, they have some uh, other options available, cash render value. After the surrender charge, they will tell you how much you're going to take home, okay? And then um, uh, if you don't like, want to receive the cash value, you can receive a paid up policy. So basically, they use the money to give you a policy with everything paid. But certainly, the face amount will be smaller, right? Or you can just extend it, term life insurance. Um, let's talk about variable life insurance. Uh, <clears throat> so the structure of variable universal life insurance policy much like universal life policy with one major exception. Variable universal insurance policy permits the owner of the life insurance policy to direct the investment of the policy holder's cash value. So basically, in whole life and then <clears throat> universal life, uh, they tell you uh, how much you will grow and then what is your uh, rate of return. They have rules, okay, I'm not a really uh, technical into that part, but they have rules and then maybe like 3%, 2% a year. <clears throat> and then if you choose variable life insurance, they are going to pick what you want to invest and then you get the return you chose, right? So that's what it looks like. It's often used by young individuals who have the risk tolerance and time frame necessary to weather equity market downturn. I would agree, just because you can direct the investment doesn't mean that only young folks need to do it. Okay, many people in the uh, insurance industry, they have no idea about investments, and then they think the insurance is everything. So I think this came from the, that world, okay. So I think this is very important, okay. Uh, whenever I say important, it will be tested, okay. So you need to uh, make sure you understand all of those, and then the premium, death benefits, all of those, okay. And then mainly applications, especially here. <coughs> So, uh, uh, life insurance ben benefit taxation, okay? If you receive dividends, it's not going to be taxable because it's a return on your basis. However, if you receive more dividends than the premium you paid, right, the difference will be considered a taxable. If you withdraw, and then they have some rules, okay? What is this contract? Uh, they have a test rule here. It's not going to be tested, but like if you. If, so what's going on is um, IRS, okay, knows that you can put money into life insurance and then there might be some tax benefits associated with it, right? 
So certainly they think that insurance is good to some extent, but if you abuse the tax treatments of that just treat it as a tax shadow, you are good, but they are not stupid, okay? They will use some rules to see whether you intentionally try to uh, set money aside on this account as a tax shadow account. And then, and then if, if they think you intentionally try to um, use it or abuse tax uh, treatment on this, you're going to lose that treatment, basically. It will be taxed as ordinary income, and then 10% pen penalty, okay, so they have some other rules. So policy owners who wish to receive lifetime benefits from a whole life insurance policy with a sugar income tax gives can achieve this in two ways, okay. So uh, if you want to uh, have some money from the life insurance policy without tax implications, you can withdraw the basis, that's your own money, right? So they're not going to tax you. It's first in, first out. Okay. Or you can take loans against the cash value. Okay. However, you need to pay, uh, you need to pay an uh, interest on those loans. Um, again, I'm not really practicing insurance, so I'm not quite sure whether people use it. But I can certainly see logically that some people mind to use it, especially if you think about interest rate or interest paid on those loans, should be able to um, deduct to deductible on some part of the uh, tax. Okay. Um, if the insurer surrender the policy prior to death, the insurer can take the cash value as a lump sum. So basically you can take them as a lump sum, all of them, or interest only. Install payments, okay. And then they will separate it and then interest part of tax as ordinary income. Uh, death benefits are generally excluded. Uh, it's called uh, proceeds. They even have uh, life insurance proceeds is income tax free. Okay. Uh, dividends earned on cash rental value are generally not taxed until withdrawn. Okay. As of January 2011, if an individual owns a life insurance policy on his or her own life, or if the proceeds of the policy are made available to the executor of his or her estate, the death benefit will be included in the gross estate. So you guys see that? Um, so life insurance proceeds, okay, uh, could be subject to estate tax if you um if you name okay if you name your estate as beneficiary. So a lot of times people don't do it. Okay, you have beneficiary, you give it to your kids or give it to them. Uh, someone else is a beneficiary. You will be passed through directly. Okay, and then loans again, life insurance are tax free. It's not including again this exchange for when life policies or another and it does not create tax for your section. And this is called a uh, 1035 exchange. Um, in tax, uh, there are a lot of exchanges. Uh, I do remember. If you have real estate property, you do have like some exchange that will be tax exempted. So you guys can see it. Life insurance can be exchanged to another life insurance or annuity tax free. Because um, insurance and annuity are all sort of like insurance companies. I think somehow they uh, figured a way to um, make make everyone. Agree, I wouldn't say um, understand. As soon as you agree that those two are very similar um, and then try to talk to IRS, it seems uh, they have some success historically, <clears throat> so that's why they have good tax treatment. I can see that. Um, I can see uh, from the insurance company perspective, they might be able to generate a lot of revenue just because of this rule. Um, if you receive benefits during life, okay, um, transfer a policy uh, for value of life insurance contract, this benefit becomes taxable to transfer it to the extent proceeds exceeds benefit. Uh, again, during life, okay, this is before death, okay. So there are some exceptions, if it's transferred to the insured, certainly that's a return wealth basis, okay. So business partner of the insured or partner of the insured, so there are some uh, exemptions here. A lot of rules. <coughs> then, if the owner insured of life insurance policy is termin terminally ill, okay, the time the policy is sold, the gain the policy will not be subject to income tax. Terminal ill is defined having life expectancy of less than 24 um, months. 
So we do um, have some accelerated death benefit. Um, I think it's AD, probably ADD. I don't know. AD is something, okay. So it's very similar. You can. <coughs> so what is happening here is look, you. Uh, if you are in a really bad right health condition, and then the doctor tells you you have less than 24 months left, so uh, it might be a good idea to take the money out, right? Because you're gonna you, because you're gonna die anyway, right? And the insurance company they will pay anyway, so so they will give you something accelerated death benefit, and then those uh, will be treated as if you are dead, and then it's life insurance process already. Uh, so that's accelerated death benefit. Okay, entitled or qualified insurer to receive a lifetime benefit deemed non-taxable. It's very similar to what what, what it was. Right? If you go back to, to this, right? it's the same. This is where it is sold. Okay, this is where it is sold. Um, I wouldn't. I, I I don't think anyone will save that. That's ridiculous. Let's just cross this. Okay. This is more. Uh, this is more. This is more common because if you die, right? Who's gonna sell you life insurance if everyone knows you're gonna die in two years? I don't think anyone of them would do. Okay, or like it would be super expensive. You basically give me the money and then they give it back to you tomorrow. So that's what it feels like. How much are they gonna ask for? How much are they gonna pay you in the future? So if you want a two million dollar policy, you give them two million dollars. Okay, I I don't know why it's over there. So this is what I was talking about, okay? But it was only the original insurer and the original insurer, okay? Imposing reporting requirements or certain sales of life insurance per season. Group life insurance, this is uh, more common, okay? So like we, I have group insurance. So whenever we see group, uh, it means it's from the employer, okay? Uh, premiums are paid by the employer, okay? Are taxable income to the employee. Because that would be considered your compensation, right? So they pay for you. It's your benefit. Um, it's not what it offered. So. But if you have a business, you can offer it to yourself, right? So at Winthrop, they have offered something like annual, re annual renew. Term. Even though it didn't say it, but it is annual renew term. Uh, the premium paid are not tax deductible by individuals. Um, group group life insurance premium paid by employer are deductible by the employer. Okay, so whenever you receive a deductible, you you have to have a taxable income. Premium paid by employer are tax taxable income to the employee in excess of fifteen thousand of coverage. So that's why. Um, you will hear people talk about, oh, my employer, <coughs> they have a coverage for me. And then uh, your initial reaction would be, maybe that's not enough because think about it. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of employer will only provide fifty thousand dollars default. Okay, if they say, oh, we're gonna provide life insurance benefit for free. Okay, very likely they provide fifty thousand dollar only, and that's not enough. Okay. So I have uh, around uh, $390,000 from this up. So you, I have to pay additional. Uh, taxation of group term benefits received during life. Uh, for example, Frank, age 40, earns this amount of money and has a group term through employer equal to twice his salary. How does the income need to be imputed? Table 1, the monthly cost. So basically they tell you how much, okay? How much income to calculate? Um, I'm not gonna test it. Okay, let me just cross this. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It looks like, okay. and then they have. I think this is a number you need to look for. Um, and then this is what it is. So basically, the IRS, okay, Internal Revenue Code, tells you uh, what they what they think will be the cost of life insurance coverage. What they think is, uh, you pay ten cents for every one thousand um, dollars, and then they have grace period. <clears throat> so uh, if you cannot make a premium payment on on time, you have like around one to two months. If the person died during grace period, insured assume insured will have renewed. Okay, so that's good news. 
New contestability, you cannot contest it. Once the policy has been enforced for a period of time, more than two years, okay, you cannot, the insurer cannot cancel the policy if they later discover a material misrepresentation. So basically, they have two years to find out any anything you said uh, incorrect to them. Misstatement of gender or age. And then young folks and female pay less for life insurance because uh, they live longer. Misstatement of age application will not void the contract. Okay. The benefit is paid but just up or down by what premium have been if age was accurately stated. You can see that if you um I don't know why, but if you uh, if you have diff a wrong age over there and then you pay a premium less than what you should pay and then they they cannot say oh because you told me a wrong age I this contract is not valid. If he's a premium back. No, that's not how it kinda of works. What they do is they're gonna adjust, okay, they're gonna see how much you pay your uh, monthly premium and then how much uh, face amount you should get, they will adjust that accordingly. Okay. Um, and then assign, when owner assign rights to someone else, we have absolute assignment, transfer all policy rights, typically the result of divorce. Collateral assignment used for collateral on death, so when, you buy, when you borrow some thing, right, you can use your whole life insurance as a collateral. Okay. Uh, suicide coverage is excluded if su suicide is committed within one or two years of purchasing the policy, so make sure you read the policy. Suicide within exclusion period premiums are returned, so they're going to return the premium. Reinstallment if life insurance part lapse. Okay. So basically, if you don't pay uh, premium, and then you will lapse, right? Uh, after the grace period, policy may permit reinstallment provided that the requirements specified in policy are satisfied. So they may give you some provision that you can reinstall it. Okay, if you are familiar with software, the policy will specify the reinstallment without evidence of insurability. Okay, for a short time period, like thirty-one days. And certainly they have some loan provisions. When a policy loan is issued, there are no income tax consequences. And then the interest rate charge on the loan, typically low rate, is specified in the contract. Any loss, any other death of the insured plus acuity interest on the loan is deducted from the death benefit paid to the policy beneficiary. Individual organization that will receive the death benefit upon death is referred to as a primary um, beneficiary. And then you have contingent beneficiary if the primary beneficiary is not available to receive the proceeds. Okay. So for me, my wife is the primary, my two kids are the secondary or contingent beneficiary. Um, so how are you going to receive it? You can receive a lump sum interest payment or they offer some other multiple time types. Uh, buy sale agreement is um, required the sale and purchase of security owned by one individual to another upon happening a triggering event. To plan for orderly transfer and control of business interest, create a market for stock that is not traded, to plan for liquidity in estate, so what is going on here is you have business, right? Then you have partner, right? Let me say um, partner one, partner two, partner three, partner four. So if this is a one million dollar business, and then everyone of them will have two hundred fifty thousand dollars for ownership. So if this person dies, um, what can they do? Uh, if this person dies, the business ownership might be. Uh, belong to their kids, right? What if you don't like their kids? So what's going on here is, look, uh, there are multiple ways to do this. I think the, the business can buy a policy on all of them, okay? And then if one die, they have cash, right? And then they can use the cash to buy the business owner ownership from this person. Is that making sense? The business can own it using their business income. Oh, you can do cross, right? Like each person owns Three life insurance, uh, ben and three life insurance on those the other three partners, and then if one of them die, you're gonna use some the cash proceeds to buy the ownership, right? This person has the cash, you get the business ownership. So there are multiple ways to do it. Is that making sense? Okay. Uh, so there are some trickling event. 
um, entity purchase uh, sim simplest form. That's what I was talking about. The business, business for the insurance. Okay. Uh, by sale agreement will increase the taxable gain upon sale of the interest. That's um, so basically you have a taxable gain. Okay. Uh, may may present tax problems. Yes, this is the type. Okay. So they have some tax implications. Because you have uh, insurance on some other people, it's intentionally to buy that business. Okay, so um, the proceeds will be taxable. And then this is a cross purchase agreement I was talking about. Uh, it has the ability to increase in survival owner's basis in the shares of the business entity, so you use the cash to buy it. Um, I typically prefer from a tax planning standpoint because it permits the surviving shareholder to increase their basis in the business. It's true. The death benefit on life insurance owned by individuals not subject to the possible imposition of the alternative this AMT tax. Um, I think it's been there for a while and then people talk about it. I haven't done tax for a while so I'm, I wouldn't talk too much about it. In case I say something wrong, okay, life insurance owned by business owners outside a corporation does not trigger any potential community earning tax. Okay. We then see by the agreement uh, hybrid between entity and across. Business has the first option to purchase the interest. Of, uh, so the business has the first interest, and then the partners have the second interest. The surviving owners of the com company may give the opportunity to purchase the deceased. So again, it's just agreement. You can structure it in a way you want it to be. Um, I think that's all.